Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is James and welcome back to The Soundline. So what I'm going to be doing for you guys today is showing you everything that you can do and how to set up a new cartridge on your turntable. There are a lot of adjustments that you can make. Not all turntables have these adjustments, but this one that we have here, you can make most of these adjustments, I believe. So I'm gonna show you basically how to set it up from complete end to end, uh, checking the levels, checking the tracking force, the, the tracking angles, absolutely everything. Um, something I also wanna just note, if you buy a turntable from us, we do all of this for you for free, but in the event that you're wanting to set up a turntable yourself, this is a, hopefully a helpful guide on how to do that. So the very first thing you want to do when setting up a turntable with a new cartridge is check that the turntable itself is level. Records are not designed to be played on an angle or vertical. Um, they are designed to be played completely flat so that the cartridge tracks correctly. So I've got myself a big spirit level here and I'm just going to make sure that the turntable is sitting level. Now I can see the bubble on this is shifted a wee bit towards the front side of the turntable so it means it's leaning back. There are two ways you could fix this. If you have a hi-fi rack, you can usually adjust it to some extent, like adjust the feet to bring the front of it up or whatever part of it up that you need to. Or if your turntable has adjustable feet, you can adjust those to make the turntable level. You're gonna to wanna to try it on a few different axes, forward to back, side to side, and then once I've got those level, I always like to try myself like a diagonal one as well, just to make sure that that is accurate. For the purposes of this video, I can't actually fix this problem because this turntable does not have adjustable feet. It's just about the only thing that this turntable can't adjust. And we're on a great big countertop here which I can't adjust. But for you guys, when you're doing it, make sure the first thing you do is that your turntable, the platter section of it at least, is sitting level so that the record is level with the floor. So the next step is to install your cartridge. I have myself here a Nagoka MP300. These ones have no threads in the body of them which means I'm using a nut and bolt on either side to hold it on and then I'm also going to attach the leads. And once we've done that we can move on to the next step which is the initial tracking force. Okay so that's the cartridge installed, it's on there. I've got the bolts you know 90% tight, not 100% because I know I'm going to adjust the position of it on the tone arm shortly. But the very next thing we're going to do is the initial tracking force because before we go any further and try and make sure that you know all of the tracking angles and things like that are correct we need to make sure that if we do put our cartridge down we don't apply too much force to it and cause any damage so the first thing we're going to do is not is get it not perfect but you know relatively close to our ideal tracking force so that when we make adjustments it's not too much more to adjust on the weight side of things so for this turntable here since we don't have a dial on the back to tell us what we're doing with our tracking force I'm using a digital scale. These are good for if you have high-end turntables anyway because they're going to be far more accurate than what you can do yourself with your, you know, with the feeling from your hands or from an analog dial. So these are a good thing to have if you set your, if you change cartridges often or you like to set up your turntable yourself. Like most cartridges, this one tracks at around about two grams. So I'm just going to get that over there and just make sure that whatever weight it's at is relatively close to it. Okay, so we're at 2.11 there. That's fine, that's not gonna cause any damage if I lower it down onto the stylus. And um, obviously sometimes you would do this step and you would find that it instantly goes to four grams and that's when you would need to make an immediate adjustment and bring it back closer to its ideal tracking force. Okay, so the next step is the VTA, which stands for vertical tracking angle. That is the relationship between the tone arm and the level of the record. Or the other way you can imagine it is how steep the needle rides on the uh, record itself. Now that I have my weight relatively correct, I can lower this onto the record. You can see that the tone arm isn't parallel to the surface of the record, and that's what we want to adjust. We want to make the tone arm exactly parallel with the surface of the record. That way we know the cartridge is tracking at exactly the right amount of steepness. Looks like the center of the tone arm is at about 23.5 millimeters above the record. And if I go this end, we're at more like 29. So we're out by quite a wee bit. 
so what I need to do to correct this, to correct this end of the tone arm being too high, different turntables will adjust this in different ways. The way this turntable does it, this whole tone arm bearing assembly shifts up and down in this mounting plate here. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to very carefully loosen off the set screw that holds it in place and try and lower it by what I feel was, I think the difference was about four or five millimeters. So I'm just going to lower it by that and then I'm going to recheck it. And then beyond that, it's basically just a process of adjust, check, adjust, recheck until you get the tone arm completely parallel to the record. I now, when I apply the ruler to it, I have a distance of relatively about 27 millimeters from the record to the tone arm. And then at this end, I have the same thing. So now, that is our VTA set. We can put the tone arm back in its rest. So the next step is to get the cartridge aligned accurately on the tone arm. That is uh, basically the relationship of how far in towards the center of the record or how far towards the out of, outside of the record the cartridge is pointing. For setting that up, we have ourselves a wee tool here. It's basically a protractor that has a few different landing points marked on it with three different standards so that we can assemble this on the tone arm, or sorry, on the platter, and then we can adjust the cartridge on the tone arm here to get that angle and position forward or back exactly right. So this piece here has a hole in it and that just goes over the spindle of the platter. And then this piece here, whoops, has a couple of wee pieces sticking out the bottom that just line up inside this and just sits in place. Okay, so we've got this on the platter. What we want to do now is this, the tip of this needle point here, we want that to be exactly dead center over the pivot point of the tone arm. So this loosens off and we adjust this in like that. Loosen that, get it dead center, just the right height. You adjust this back and forth just by turning the platter. Just get that lined up. To me that looks pretty much dead center where the pivot point is. You can usually tell if you get the pin really close to it, you can look with your eyes and you can tell that the piece of material or plastic or metal or whatever it is directly below the pin should look like it is spinning perfectly in the center. Step one is basically just about getting the position of the cartridge forward or back correct and it hasn't landed exactly on the dot, it's about a millimeter or, or a millimeter and a half further back so I need to just raise up the tone arm, bring it back to its resting position, loosen off the bolts holding the cartridge in place, and just gently if I can slide it back about one, one and a half millimeters. Let's try there. Okay so now the cartridge is the correct distance forward on the tone arm. Step one is complete, we can go to step two out here, put it on the same letter. And now these lines on here help us line up the cartridge's angle on the tone arm. So I can basically look down on top of it with my eyes and see whether or not the cartridge is parallel to the lines or not. And it looks pretty good so I'm actually quite happy with that. I'm not going to make any more adjustments. I'm going to now go to step three and just check it towards the closer centre of the record. And again, it's accurate. I'm happy with that. That's all good. Put it back in its resting position and tighten up the screws without it moving. There we go. Just check it one more time on steps two and three to make sure it didn't move. Yep, all good. And yes, that's good, okay. And that is the cartridge alignment on the tone arm done. We can remove this now and move on to the next step. So the next step, once we have done the cartridge alignment, which we can say that we have done now, is the azimuth. And the azimuth is basically the relationship or the angle at which the cartridge sits on the record leaning to its left or right side. If you have it set too far to the left or to the right, you're gonna get an increase or a decrease in volume and in detail from the left or right channel, obviously, if you're listening to a stereo record. So to adjust the azimuth, different turntables will do it differently. This turntable here has a very nice and easy way of doing it and showing the adjustment. Basically, it's just a matter of using your eyes so you lower the cartridge onto the record or onto your test surface, which I have here. And then this one has this wee dial here that I can adjust. And this turntable here, I can adjust the azimuth just by rotating this dial and then getting down low and looking because it's a really small distance between the bottom of the cartridge body 
and the actual record, so you can kind of tell that it's parallel just by looking. It's not, not really that hard. Just look and then carefully adjust it until the surface, the straight line of the bottom of the cartridge body and the record look parallel to one another. Okay, so the next step is to do the anti-skate, which is the force that prevents the cartridge from wanting to slide in and out on the record. This will be done differently on different turntables. Some of them will have a dial, which you can adjust the level of anti-skate. Some of them will have a weight, which you can simply hang off the tone arm, which will provide the right amount of force. And some, like this turntable here, get its anti-skate from a viscous fluid, which is what we have here. So this turntable doesn't have any adjustment for its anti-skate or anything that you can remove, so we can count this turntable as being done for that step. But if you have the removable counterweight for the anti-skate on your turntable, now is the time to put it back on. Or if you have the dial, now is the time to set that initial setting. And if you have the adjustable one, it's basically just a matter of getting your test record, playing it a few times and just making and you know setting the anti-skate as you do it to make sure that the cartridge isn't sliding in and out. You know? Okay, so now once we've done the anti-skate, the final step for getting the cartridge all set up correctly is the final tracking force. You remember at the beginning we set it roughly where we thought it needed to be within Kiwi essentially, but now we want to hone it in and make it more accurate. So this cartridge here has a range of 1.8 grams to 2.2 grams. Make sure you check the specifications of your particular cartridge before you do this or before you even start really. So this one, 1.8 to 2.2, I'm going to set it right in the middle at 2.0 grams. So I've got my scale here. 2.00, okay, that's perfect. So I got it right the first time around, but in the event that you were out by like, you know, five or 10 grams, now would be the time to adjust that counterweight to get it back to exactly where you want it to be. So the last and final thing we're going to adjust to our turntable here is the speed at which the platter turns. Again, different turntables, some turntables will have this, some won't. The way you measure this is you need a strobe kit, and you can get these in, you know, from a variety of different manufacturers. Basically the way it works is we have this puck here which goes on the centre of our spindle with a bunch of lines around it. And then we have a little LED here, which when we turn it on, depending on what we set it to, flashes at a very specific rate. And when that flashes at a specific rate and this is turning around, the lines on it will look like they're either moving forwards if it's going too, far, too fast, or they'll be moving backwards if it's going too slow, and if we got the exact right speed, the lines should look like they're not moving at all, like they should just be staying still. Start up our turntable. We get our wee strobe here and we just sit it over to the side. And then we just align this light directly over the lines there. And I can see already by looking at it, the lines appear to be moving backwards, indicating that it's going too slow. So now that we have them going backwards, we know that the turntable is rotating too slow. And on the back of this turntable here, there is a wee set screw that I can access with a wee flat blade screwdriver. It's just a matter of getting that in there, and then while watching the strobe, slowly rotating it until the lines appear to stop moving backwards and stay still. Just keep going. Almost there, they're slowing right down now. There we go. So now the lines appear, to my eye, to be staying dead still, so I know that this is rotating at exactly 33 and a third RPM. Okay guys, that has been absolutely everything that you can possibly do to set up your turntable so that it is all, uh, you know, correctly tracking and spinning and basically everything from top to bottom. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions about how to set up your turntable, uh, do feel free to pop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Hopefully it's a brand that I know. But if not, you know, the best place to check with is always the operator's manual. It should say whether or not your turntable can have that specific uh, component adjusted or not. But as I say, thanks for watching this video, guys. Hope you catch you in the next one. Kakete anō.